Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, so normally, after you finish your rear end, um, the, you know, you install it and finish up. What's going on back there? I'm missing some parts. So I'm in the plane, just playing a waiting game. They may be here in the next couple days, who knows. In the meantime, I'm just going to keep plugging away at other stuff. Um, I pulled my transmission out, um, and so my plan with it um, is it was rebuilt and never ran um, back in the early 80s. Um, it's a C4 transmission, so everything should be new inside. Um, so I'm just taking it apart, checking things out, replacing the filter like it was leaking. I put fluid in the very video number one where we ran it. Um, it moved, so it works. Um, but it was leaking. The oil pan was leaking. The servos are leaking. Shift seals leaking. Like everything, all the gaskets are pretty well. Well, they're forty years old now. Um, so I'm gonna good. I have a. I bought a leak seal kit, so I'm gonna install it. Um, just let me. I'll show you what I did so far. Okay. Well, I've got it apart. Here, as you can see, I have the valve body out already. Um, I got tail shaft off. Everything's over here. Tail shaft. It looks heavier than that is. It's very light. Um, all aluminum. So I did clean it up. It was pretty caked and with dirt and stuff, so I gave it a scrub. Um, valve body. Um, just removed it. I have new filters for it. Um, my kit includes me. I replaced this seal up here. Um, I have new gaskets. I think gaskets must still be on there. Um, yeah, there's the old gasket. Get rid of that. Um, what else? Yeah, I just did some air checks um, just to make sure everything's working. Everything's everything's working the way it should. If I can show you here. Um, I think it was this one. This one? Yeah, I did that one earlier. And if it's full of oil, it'll blow everywhere. So just remember that. So that should just move that band. So check. And this one. And you can see, like, there's the piston. There's the hole. I guess not as... It's right there. So that's working. Um, is that leaking? Stop it. And this one, same thing. It's right there. So we can go. Oops. Whoa, hello. It's a little loud. That and the governor back here, you can check. It should make a noise. Oh, wrong one. This one. No, this one. You hear that? That means, that means the governor's working fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to carry on, um, going to take my gear selector out, what else, oh the parking poly, it works, it's right there, um, and yeah, everything spins the way it should, so, everything looks alright, I don't think I'll take it apart enough to take the clutches out, I'm going to take the front pump off once I get all this done, um, so I can replace that seal. Um, but yeah, uh, one next step is going to be replacing this, which is pretty straightforward. Um, there's just a shaft and a shaft, as you can see. So there's one seal up under here, um, and there's just an O-ring. Should be an O-ring back in there. Um, yeah, so just undo that nut, and everything should just, or yeah, take that shaft off, undo that nut, and I think it'll slide out. We'll find out. Okay. So here's the old seal kit. Um, as you can see, I have my shifter seals. I have new seals for the um, band adjusters. No rings in there. Not sure where they all go yet, but I'm sure I'll find a home. And then front seal. Nice that they labeled them. Rear seal. And then my gaskets underneath. So I already have the um, shifter seal out. So I'm going to replace that now. It was just, as soon as I touched it, it cracked. So this is probably a good thing and I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, we'll get that one put in. I think it's right there. And uh, get that uh, linkage back together. Here it is out. Um, and here it is, kind of splayed out. There's the old seal. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's really crumbly. Um, yeah, so everything's in there. Got to make sure I get my o-ring out of the one spot so yeah get everything put back together 
Okay, so I just finished replacing my seal. Um, got it back together. Everything works all right so far, I think. Um, one thing to remember, there's this lever here. I think it goes in between this one, I believe. Um, if I remember right. Um, I think it goes there. It seems to work all right in that position anyway. Um, I also did my one adjusting nut. They were pretty rusty, but it came off all right. I think there was enough oil on inside. It uh, came right off. So in the manual, it just says put the new nut on, tighten your adjusting screw um, to 10 foot-pounds. So my torque wrench only goes down to 20, but I do have an inch-pound torque wrench. Um, so 10 foot-pounds, 120 inch-pounds. Um, but it you have to use um, So it's a square end on it. So you use a 3 8 socket as you can see here So this is oops, that's gone um, So I just have a, a uh, 3 8 drive Allen One I don't know where that other one went anyways. It goes on this end. Okay. Where was that? so this you see just an Allen um, head. So this goes into a, what is that, 5 sixteenths. There we go. So that goes on there, and that will fit right on there. Um, now it's 3 eighths, and I think that square is actually 5 sixteenths, but it does allow you to get enough bite on it to uh, get 10, 10 foot-pounds. Um, so you tighten up 10 foot-pounds, and that's this intermediate band you back off, one and three quarter turns. So I did that and then just snug up the nut and uh, you're good. And I did an air check and everything works all right. So now I'm going to move on to the low reverse band on the back here, get that nut replaced and then start on my servos. Okay, so I just got the old one off. My adjusting nut, or adjusting nut, adjusting screw is just loose and I just dropped my socket in the transmission so that's not good get that out of there so what i'm going to do now is this is going to 10 foot pounds of course in the manual it says there's a use your special ford tool that only especially made just for this but you know nobody has that It'd be just about there. There it is. 10 foot pounds. Okay. So now, um, here we are. So this has to go out exactly three turns, it says. So let's see if we can. Where's a good starting point? Right here. So exactly three turns. Oh, yeah. So one. Two and three. So this is where now I adjust my uh, tighten up my lock nut and just make it nice and snug. And that is it. So, but I need two hands for that. So I'll be back. Right. So got that all tightened up. So we're gonna check it, make sure everything's all right. That should move right there. Oops. moving this is I think it's this one no sorry this one that was a clutch pack I think so you can hear it move I think that was the one I don't know what this one is that's something clutch packs oh shoot now oh yeah look out anyway that's working and what else oh one thing I have to do as well, uh, my modulator is missing the pin. So there is a pin that goes in here, where am I? right there, that goes into here. And as you can see in there, it is not there. So one thing I found out, I have a, so you can just make one. Like I just use a welding rod. Um, 
I think eighth inch, I believe, is what it calls for. Um, so there were different styles of modulators using these transmissions. There's a screw-in type and then a push-in type. So the push-in is obviously a screw-in. The push-in pin length was like around 1.65 inches. The screw-in, um, I'm having trouble finding an exact length for it, but it can't be over uh, 1.75 inches. So I saw one guy just, he had a stock one and it was 1.73. So I think I'm going to make one and just make it like that. 1.73 inches, uh, try it out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, um, these are adjustable. Um, so yeah, we'll give it a shot. Okay, well, we have hit a significant roadblock. Um, I went to try out my pin, and I, I better, I need to look a little closer at these things. My whole plunger assembly is missing out of here. Uh, that explains why there's no pin, because there should be a plunger with a spring and something in here, and it is non-existent. And I, it, if I you know, went back to my first videos, it was not there. I knew the pin was gone. I didn't notice that uh, that's completely missing. So that's no good. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do now. Um, I'm hoping I can find a replacement. Um, I should be able to. I haven't really looked yet. So I may stop and do that before I go any further. Um, yeah, it's just no, it's just gone. So that's no good. It didn't come out. It didn't fall out. I never took anything out of there. Um, so yeah, I'll figure this out, I guess. On a good note, I made this pin, so so that's ready to go. Whenever I get to that uh, little plunger assembly in there. Um, yeah. All right. Well, it's a couple days later. Um, turns out that little part that I'm missing is called the throttle valve, and it is hard to come by. Um, so there's, I got a couple emails sent, and uh, just to make sure that that is the right, correct part, because what I've found is that this transmission, um, there were two modulators. One was a screw-in type, one was a push-in type. The screw-in types were made from 1966 to 1972. Um, and then after that, it's push-in. So on the screw-in type modulators, they uh, had a different throttle valve assembly than the later ones. So there's only a, what's that, 66 to 72? So it's a six year span, they actually had this part. Um, and they made the C4 from, I think, 66 to 86 or something. So there's a lot more of the later style throttle valve assemblies and everyone. That's why the pin's different as well. I see a lot of guys saying they use the 1.62 inch pin, but that was for the push-in type. Screw-in type needed a 170 something. So anyways, uh, so I'm done working on the transmission until I get that part because I don't know what I'm going to do because it's kind of, if I don't have, that's a pretty important little it's only this big, but it's pretty important. Um, without it, I don't think it'll shift, actually, um, which is a problem. I need more than just first gear. Um, so I think I'm just not going to go any further with this one. I'm going to, because uh, there's no point waiting, wasting gaskets and if I can't use this transmission. Um, I'm hoping that the guy I sent some emails to will respond. Uh, with the correct part and I'm able to get it and it'll ship here maybe take a couple weeks, but I do have other stuff I need to do um, It's because this Putting this back together won't take that long um, I should only be a few hours more if I have that assembly so or um, I may have to buy it. I've seen a couple um, Of this style of train like mid 60s transmit C4s for sale um, for a few hundred bucks and they're already beat up so I may be able to may have to bite the bullet and buy a whole other transmission to get that part 
Um, this one's been rebuilt already. Um, it's, you know, should be good to go. And I just need that little throttle valve. So, it's too bad. Bit of a pain, but what can you do? It's the first real big snag I've hit so far in this build, so I don't know. I think I'm doing all right. I don't feel like I've had any other great big ones. Um, yeah, but I have since done a couple other little things, and I'm ready actually to put my uh, rear end assembly back in, so that's a big deal. Uh, actually, the, the third member's already in, my axles. Uh, let me show you what I did. I screwed up on there too. Okay, there's an axle. So this is the passenger side. It's a little longer. Um, there's a new, my brand new bearing, my brand new bearing retainer, and this is the bearing, my axle retainer that was supposed to go on before I put those two things on. So, um, yeah, that was a bit of a problem. Took everything over to a buddy's place. He's got a press. It went on so smooth. Everything worked great, and then we were talking, and like, what holds the back axle in? I'm like, oh, the retainer that's supposed to go on there. So, um, I don't know of a way to get this off without, you know, using a grinder. Same as the, that's how I got the first ones off. I just made a notch, or even says in the manual, take a chisel, hit it in a few spots, and that should be enough to get it off, just to change the shape a little bit, make it expand. Um, the bearing, um, I'd probably wreck these getting them off. So, and I don't feel like buying new bearings. So I did a little research and this is what I found. So, bearing axle retainers. Um, these go on just like so. Um, they go on here and they go on there and that holds your axle in. So these were used a lot on the Ford. The only ones I can find were Ford 9 inch. Um, these aren't listed for a Ford 8 inch, but I found out that this year of Ford 8 inch has the exact size bearings and axles out of a Ford 9 inch. Um, and it has the same bolt spacing, same everything else. You can literally take the axles and everything out of a Ford. If you were to buy a nine inch, like a 69, this is called a small bearing. It was, it was a small bearing nine inch. You can take the axles out of an eight inch and they, they're identical. You just slide them right in. So which led me to believe that I would be able to use these axle retainers, um, which I should, because they just go on like so. And then you torque them down. Um, I thought about just notching these retainers, but the metal is quite a bit thinner. I don't know if you can see that. So there's that compared to these new retainers. Um, so yeah, look at the thickness difference on them. So there's a reason why. Like if I were to just notch this one to make it look like that one, you're cutting out all that metal, which kind of ruins the strength of this piece, which is uh, fairly thin. So that's why I think they make these for guys like me, or if you're doing axle swaps a lot, I don't know. Um, but I felt like this was a good solution to my problem and it, I think it's going to work fine. So that's what I'm doing. Um, so now I, yeah, everything I've got my seal in, I do have to, I don't have gaskets for my uh, axle flange area there. Um, so in here, there's supposed to be a gasket um, inside here, and I, I can't remember if there was one on this. I don't think, yeah, there was no gasket on here, just in between here. Um, so I'm just going to use some silicone um, and put it on. Um, that's how this one actually came off. There was no paper gasket behind it. So, because this seal had been replaced once already, there was just silicone and it seemed to be working fine. It wasn't leaking or anything. Um, hence all the rust that was on it. If it was leaking, it wouldn't have been quite as rusty. So, I'm going to, uh, I gotta pull this off again, clean it up, get all the oil off it, silicone it. Um, another thing, I wanted to make sure, put some oil in my diff just to make sure nothing's leaking. Um, uh, so I want to do that as well, and then once I get my axles in, 
I can uh, start doing my brakes. And I sh should have all my parts to do my rear brakes, so that'll be exciting. Get those done, and uh, so yeah, so that's enough work for me to do. I also want to, I'm going to button up that transmission um, and set it aside for now. And uh, yeah, once this is all done, I can work on my engine, but that's a few days away. So let's uh, get that transmission put back together in a way, um, and I will uh, get on this rear end. Right. Well, I've got my axles installed, got it done on both sides. Turns all right. I've got uh, my oil in the uh, just an 8090 in the rear end there um, with the limited slip friction bottle that Yukon gives you, or I had to buy. But um, yeah, that's done. Got my transmission put back together. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, so this side, as you can see, that's done too. Um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to show everybody, um, it's my new steering wheel. So, I got rid of, well, I didn't get rid of the old one. Here's the old one here. Um, forget what it looked like. That was it. Um, and this was the insert in the middle. So it was a rim blow steering wheel. Um, you can see the old horn inside the rim there. Um, I thought about rebuilding this one or buying a new one, but until I looked at the price, a new one of the rim blow was over a thousand dollars that I could find, um, and to rebuild it would probably be about five to six hundred dollars just for, like, the inside strip, and I need new foam for the center, and it was fairly pricey, and I wasn't sure, um, I guess I could have, you can see the splits in this one, um, for some reason, these do that over the years. They create a gap. I don't know why. I don't know what causes it, but you can fill that with epoxy and stuff. So it still doesn't going to look right. So I just bought a new steering wheel. Um, I like the looks of this one. I think it fits all right. It suits the interior. Um, it's a leather wrapped um, steering wheel. It's got the integrated horn in the middle. Um, you have to buy this adapter that for this year of car um, and then this yeah it just fits right on horn works I tested it out um, everything works pretty good nice and smooth the only thing I had to do was shave down the inside because when I put this on um, tightened it up it butted up against the edge right here so um, I took a file and just nice and evenly kind of took it down um, yeah, looks all right. I think, it, I think it suits the car. I like the looks of it. I like the feel of it. It's one, that was a 15 inch on the old one. This is a 14 inch. Um, I think it's, what model is it? It's a Volante S6, I believe. Got it from Summit Racing. Um, but yeah, steering wheel's 200 bucks. And the adapter was another, I think, 60. So I think grand total was around, I want to say $300. Um, which is significantly cheaper um, than the other one. So I'm happy with that. Feels great. I really like the looks of it. Um, I don't know. Let me just guys think if you want. Um, but yeah, that's a steering wheel. So the interior is pretty well done. I think I just have to put the one ashtray in. And I think, oh wow, dome light. I gotta put my dome light in. Um, yeah. That's about, uh, that's it for it. that. It's really coming together. Um, so yeah, that's in, so I can start putting on my brakes. I gotta go through and make sure that I have all my parts. And then try to remember how to do drum brakes. So, I gotta look that up. Um, oh, you can see my plate I had to put on each side. Um, yeah, everything turns nice and easy. There's no binding or anything. Um, yeah, torqued these. I think the book said 20 to 40 foot pounds, so I went 40. Just because it's not, you know, it was meant for the retainer plates, but I don't know. I think it looks all right. I think it's going to work. Uh, yeah. So, I got my box of brakes down there. So, I got to pull those out. Um, oh, yeah, one thing. I'll show you this. So, 
Let me show you the old wheels. I got new tires as well. Got some Cooper Cobras. Um, that's what the rim looks like. Um, it's aluminum. It's just that's I haven't touched the, these ones. Um, so the ones I have mounted on the front, so wait for lug nuts. The yeah, I polished them up a little bit. I just took some 2000 grit sandpaper, sanded them, and then had a little buffing wheel. And I did a quick buff on them, and they polished up pretty good. It still looks like a burnished finish on it currently. Um, yeah, it looks way better than it did. So I may still have to, depends on how, I don't know if I want them to be a mirror finish. Um, but yeah, they look way better than they did. Um, oh, and these rims, so these are called a unit lug bolt pattern. So these are made to fit four and a half by five, five by five, and five and a half by five. So they just kind of get progressively outside. Um, if I were doing, because I have four and a five, four and a half by five, it, um, you see I have an offset washer. So to get new ones of these was a bit of a pain. I already bought some. Um, I, I bought them quite a while ago. And then, but they, they fit on. The bolt pattern's half by 20. Um, but I didn't try them in the rim and they are too thick to go in here. Um, so I found some different ones. I believe these were 11 sixteenths. Um, no, sorry, the ones I bought were 11 sixteenths. This gap is 5 eighths. So that, and it has an internal shank. So, and there's a 60 degree um, taper on the back of the lugs. And the keyway, I can show you here. So yeah, there's the lug, as you can see. So that fits in there. Some reason when I got them, they were on backwards. So there's your, you can see the taper there. That should go in the lug like that. And there's your lug nut. Um, so yeah, these are on the way. Um, so once I get those, I'll get those put on. Um, yeah, the heck of a time, there's only, God, I found some on Summit Racing, and for a set of lug nuts, it was going to be over $200. I think it's 100 bucks for 20 lug nuts, and another 100 bucks for the, uh, what do they call that, washer, I guess. Um, but then I found some on Amazon, different brand. Um, they looked identical, I'm sure they'll be fine. But they are, yeah, they still weren't cheap, they were still 100 bucks. Um, yeah, I think they'll, a little different. I've never seen these ones before. I think they were fairly common back in the day. Um, yeah, once I get those, I'll get those put on. So, now, brakes. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so, I'm just, you know, taking inventory of all my brake parts and what I have. Uh, so I have new shoes, I bought new rotors, I bought you know, small parts kits, all my springs. Um, I realize I have to, I guess these come separate. These, it's the parking brake um, piece, I guess, I don't know, arm, I guess. I'll have to take it off the old one. Same as my separator, uh, I'll have to take it off the old brakes. But I opened the box to my new drape, brake drums, and these aren't even remotely correct. So. If I Google this part number, which is the Rebestos 2623R, it says they're everywhere all online. It says they're a 10 inch by inch and three quarter um, brake drum. And that's the same as the pads. That's what I ordered. I measured my old ones. They were 10 inches across the inside diameter and the old pads were inch and three quarter. So that's what I ordered. So. What I got instead in the box is a, let me show you here, hold on, is this piece of garbage. Um, this is supposed to be a 10 inch brake drum according to the part number that's on the box. That's not even remotely right. Right bolt pattern. And then when you measure it, like the other one measures 10 inches across the bottom and that measures eight inches. And everywhere I look, it says this part number should be a 10 inch drum. So I don't know what's going on. I ordered two of them, which is great. 
So they're absolutely useless. Um, ugh, I'm so annoyed. Because I, I bought these a few months ago, so now i got to contact the company and see what the hell's going on. Because, um, yeah, you Google this part number and it says 10-inch drum. So that's right from the manufacturer that is a problem. So, um, yeah, but I can keep going. Once I get my parking brake arm off those, I can hopefully transfer it. I think I can. I think I can transfer that to the uh, new shoes, and then I can do the rest of the install. The drum goes on last anyway, so I can get that done. I can get my parking brake done. Um, but yeah, I can't put my wheels on, which is annoying. So, and, and now I gotta sort it out, and it's a long weekend, so. That's not happening. All right, might as well get to work. All right. So, I uh, got my parking brake lever put on. Um, I took it off the old one, cleaned it up. It's just a little pitted, so it doesn't look too bad. Um, I guess you can buy new ones of these. I didn't, um, but I think it'll work all right for what I need. Um, so yeah, they're both done. Um, the, yeah, I don't know if you can buy. I didn't even look. Um, I gotta figure out what side this goes on. I think that's for the other side. I think this side would be the passenger side one. Um, because your brake, parking brake cable comes in from the front and then it pulls on that, I guess. As far as I can tell, um, I do have a book I got to look into. Um, I do have those, and that's my parking brake cable down there. So that's got to slide in um, into this notch here. Where is it? Somewhere here. No. I got it right? Yep. That hole there. That's going to come into there. Um, yeah. What else now? Oh, I did clean up. These parts, um, so it's a spreader bar, the springs, posts, um, yeah, so those are all ready to go back in. Um, I did speak to um, somebody about those rotors. Um, I ordered these online, um, and I talked to the live agent um, through it's parts avatar I ordered them from, which they're pretty good. Uh, I've had uh, good luck with them so far. They do free shipping on all this stuff. So, um, yeah, they said since I ordered it, ordered these, they're obviously a, a problem with them. And since I ordered them over two months ago, I think they have a 30 day window for return. But if you order them longer than that, um, they said I can go and get these replaced through warranty with the Raybestos. Um, so we'll see how that goes um, <clears throat> or what they'll do. I'm still, you know, it's the weekend, so I won't hear for probably for a little bit. Um, but if it holds me up or if I got to pay shipping to ship these back, it's not worth it. I'll just buy the correct ones and hopefully I get the right ones. It shouldn't be that difficult, you know. But whatever, frustrating. Uh, but yeah, I got lots to do here. Once I get all this put together, I gotta do my rear brake lines and everything. So uh, I'm gonna get this stuff installed and uh, I'll show you the finished product. All right, well, there it is. Rear brakes are done. I think I've got everything, you know, proper. Now, by done, I just mean this part's installed. I still have to run brake lines to the back of the uh, cylinder here. Um, but everything's plumbed all the way from the master cylinder back um, to the rear diff. Um, so yeah, got all that done. I installed my, uh, yeah, both sides are done. Here's the other side. I did also install my parking brake cable. Um, I don't know if you can see, where is it, right there? Um, so that's all done. I had to make another hook over on that side. Um, I think I just welded that bracket 
that attaches to the floor pan in the wrong spot. So I just made a longer, it's just a really, just a double ended hook, as you can see there. So I just made a longer one. Um, yeah, seems to work okay. Um, yeah. And on that note, I think I'm gonna finish off this video. Um, yeah, kind of annoyed. I don't have the right brake drums, but there's not much I can do about that. Um, the transmission, I'm going to hopefully find out this week. Um, but if anybody watching happens to have an old C4 transmission that they don't want, they just have parts for, and to have that throttle valve, let me know. Um, I'm going to ask around a few people I know, possibly, see if anybody knows where I, there is a transmission sitting there not doing anything. Um, but yeah, as far as that goes, um, I can finish doing my brakes and then I can probably start on the engine. I have a lot of prep work to do yet. Um, but yeah, anyways, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next video.